بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أسعد الله صباحكم بالخير كله صعب الله من كنا أكثر من الناس وصلنا البحث إلى موضوع المتاستاسيس انفيشن على المتاستاسيس و نقلنا the first step in the process of metastasis and invasion is the what hmm? we don't remember invasion of the extracellular matrix the cell the desmet membrane and the uh, extracellular matrix the second main step is the vascular dissemination and homing of the tumor cells. Vascular dissemination means the entrance of the metastasizing the tumor cells to the circulation, blood vessel or lymphatic circulation. And this is called by the attachment of the metastasizing the tumor cells to the vascular basement membrane. And then penetration of the vessel wall, whether blood vessel or lymphatic vessel, and entering the circulation, and this is called intravasation. The same gene expression, the same gene products, the proteins required for the attachment to the epithelial basement membrane, the same gene requirement and products, the proteins are required here. Okay? So the, the process is repeated here. The might has bad in AJ. The, within the circulation, after the intravasation, the tumor cells are now exposed to what? To what? To immune system. Okay. In the circulation, the tumor cells are now exposed to immune cells. And so the tumor cells should be able to protect themselves from the immune system. Otherwise, they will be destroyed by the immune cells, particularly the natural killer cells. The natural killer cells do not need a previous sensitization to deal with the tumor cells. and tumor immunity. And within circulation, the tumor cells adhere to each other and to the platelets and forming emboli. What is the definition of embolus? Any material transferred by the circulation is called embolus. How the tumor cells, the metastasizing, the tumor cells protect themselves from the immune system, also this will be discussed later. So the tumor cells within the circulation adhere to each other and to the platelets, and so they need to express adhesion molecules, the cadherin, to adhere to each other and forming the tumor cell emboli. These tumor cell emboli will be circulating in the circulation until reaching the target site of metastasis and extravasate from the blood vessels. Clear? 
the process of extravasation, which occurs at the distant site of metastasis, starts by the adhesion of the metastasizing the tumor cells to the endothelial cells. And then attachment to the vascular basement membrane, and then extravasation. Okay, it comes out of the blood vessel. And in the extravascular tissue, it should be able to degrade the interstitial connective tissue, the extracellular matrix again, and should be able to locomote, to migrate, to move through this degraded uh, tissue, and then reach the target site, and it should be able to proliferate and live there, to accommodate there, and homing there at that site. So, for the process of metastasis to complete, the metastasizing tumor cell should be able to produce different proteins at different stages in the form of enzymes, refractors, receptors, hormones, okay, in order to reach the uh, target site and forming the metastatic or secondary tumor. And at this target site, it should be able to accommodate there, to live there. The citroma should be favorable for their growth, replication, and forming a tumor mass at that site. Clear? So, by this process, the metastasis, the cascade, the trip of the metastasis is now completed. This is just to review. In the first slide here, the tumor cells detached from the tumor mass attached to the basement membrane, destroying the basement membrane, and then destroying, degrading the interstitial connective tissue, migrate and move until reaching the vessel, attached to the vessel, vascular basement membrane, destroying the vascular basement membrane and intravasation. And within the blood vessel, they form emboli, adhere to each other, forming emboli, and at the site of the metastasis, the target organ, the metastasizing tumor cells attach to the endothelial cells, and then attach to the basement membrane, destroying the vascular basement membrane, and it is it. Clear? And these are just revision to the process of the invasion and metastasis. Now, what are the factors that determine the site of the metastasis, secondary tumor? The important factor is the natural pathway of vascular drainage. Example, breast carcinoma, the natural lymphatic drainage is to the auxiliary lymph nodes and to the intermammary lymph nodes, okay, mainly to the auxiliary lymph nodes. So carcinoma of the breast, it is expected to metastasize to the auxiliary lymph nodes, because auxiliary lymph nodes are to the within the natural pathway of the lymphatic drainage of the breast. Robert? Other example, testicular tumors. Testicular tumors metastasize to the paraaortic lymph nodes because the normal lymphatic drainage of the testes is to the paraaortic lymph nodes. While secrotal carcinoma of vulva, carcinoma of the vulva of the secrotum, metastasized to inguinal lymph nodes. 
because there is particular joining is to the inguinal lymph nodes. So this is important factor in determining to the target organ for the metastasis. However, this does not only explain the site of metastasis or secondaries. For example, the prosthetic carcinoma most commonly metastasized to the brain, particularly to, sorry, to the bone, particularly to the spine, vertebrae. The Darajat no Iwa had shy with Betty, Ogal and the Pak A, who saw we MRI, Bulus Malali, I Bulus people. So we MRI, we have lack regularly of the secondary is in the vertebrae, or when my factor for a demon or state. Okay? المريض لازم يكون رجال مو مرة يفكرين بالبروستيت. <تصفيق> أول ما تفكر بالبروستيت، ماذا يكون بروستيت كارسينوما؟ كما اللي متاستيسايز تو ذي بون، بارتيكلرلي تو ذي سباين، and the spine is not within the natural vascular drainage. واضح؟ شنو علاقتي؟ Another example is the adrenal neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma is a malignant tumor. Most commonly in the rectal peritoneum and the adrenal glands. And these tumors are frequently metastasizing to the liver and to the bone. To the liver, when Kedmahia took a while in the liver, so what he is in Pepper syndrome. When Kedmahia took a bone, particularly to the orbit, to the skull bone, to the orbital bone, is a common site. And it is called Hutchinson syndrome. So, what is the relationship between the liver and the adrenal? Neither liver nor bone are within the normal, natural drainage pathway. However, a tumor of the lungs mainly metastasizes to the brain. You don't get to know any lung mass, you have to do CT or MRI to the brain to detect the secondary journal. Any brain tumor, you have to do CT scan of the chest to detect whether there is a mass in the lung, and this could be secondary from it. Okay, but also frequently metastasizing to the to the brain. So, what are the factors other than the natural vascular drainage that determine the site of metastasis, which is called site-specific homing? of the homing, yani, stevan. The first step in the epistrophization is the adhesion to the endothelial cells. And for the tumor, metastasizing the tumor cells, to be able to adhere to the endothelial cells, it should express receptors. And the receptors will bind to the ligands here. This is the tumors, metastasizing tumor cell, express these receptors, and the ligands for these receptors are found at the endothelial cells of the Tabularies of the target organ. Open the gun, what is the gun? Okay. So, for example, for the carcinoma of the lung, the tumor cells are from carcinoma of the lung, circulate in the circulation until it finds the ligands in the expressed by the endothelial cells of the capillaries of the brain, for example, then the tumor cell can adhere, attach to the endothelial cells. Otherwise, it will leave the site and go to other sites. To put it up, it lower, and then ligands, okay? So the first step is that the tumor cells, metastasizing tumor cells, should be able to express receptors 
in order to adhere to the endothelial cells. And the receptor, there should be a specific ligands for these receptors. Okay? So the site of metastasis is determined by the ligands expressed by the endothelial cells of the capillaries of the target organ. This is very important factor determine the uh, site of metastasis. Some target organs producing growth factors and these growth factors may be attracted to the tumor cells, tumor factor, or to have the inflammation, or to have chemotaxis and chemotactic organs, okay? The rabbit is the head. And another factor is the receptive citroma. The receptive citroma, yani makani li rahi stakbil, tumor cells of Jaya should be favorable for the growth and homing of the tumor cells. If this receptive citroma is unfavorable, so there will be no secondaries at that site. Clear? Even when the cell has complete set of gene products and reaching that site, but the receptive citroma is unfavorable, so there will be no secondaries in this immune receptive citroma or organ. What I said, the process of the invasion and metastasis. Now the tumor angiogenesis, uh, the term angiogenesis means phenotype forming this maximum angio. In a terminology, not for the top level, angio means muscle, okay? Hemangio, blood vessels, lymph angio, lymphatic vessels. Angiogenesis means synthesis of new blood vessels. And this is regarded as the most important factor that determines the rate of the tumor growth and the potential aggressiveness of the tumor. For the tumor to grow and become aggressive, there should be synthesis of the new blood vessels, angiogenesis. And this is important to supply the proliferating the tumor cells with oxygen and nutrients. The maximum distance that the tumor can reach in size is one to two millimeter. Beyond this level, the proliferating the tumor cells will undergo hypoxia, anoxia, lack of nutrition, and will die. One to two millimeter represent the maximum distance of the diffusion of the oxygen and the nutrients from the blood vessel to the cells. Okay, so any adult in the tumor cannot grow more than one to two millimeters without angiogenesis. Most human cancers at early stage do not induce angiogenesis and remain localized or in situ until the angiogenesis start and then start to grow in size and become metastasizing and aggressive. Like in this picture, this is from your book. The tumor here is a small in size, and in spite of the presence of a growth factor, where the tumor remains small in size and not metastasizing, because no angiogenesis. 
while here after development of the blood vessels new blood vessels the tumor becomes larger in size and becomes aggressive it can invade and can metastasize ولذلك تمرات تسمع يعني المريض هو يقول لك المريض خلينا نقول عندها بريست ماس ويقول لك هي صغيره وانا عرفت هي بكثره شو هسه بسرعه بسرعه كبرت مو؟ وانس انجيوجينيس از ستارت ذا تيومر بيكمز لارجر اند بيكمز مو بيكمز اجريسيف وذات انجيوجينيس ترمينز لوكاليز سمول اند نوت اجريسيف So how do they grow in the tumors? Develop their own blood vessels. This is controlled by the synthesis of the angiogenic factors and angiogenic inhibitors or anti-angiogenic factors. There is a balance. The most important angiogenic factor produced by the tumor cells and by the associated inflammatory cell is the vasculoendothelial growth factor, VEGF. Damn it, just a more VEGF, vasculoendothelial growth factor. This is produced by the tumor cells. Other growth factor, which is the basic hypoplastic growth factor, which will result from the produced by the cleavage of the extracellular matrix. The coronal barca, then the product of the degradation of the extracellular matrix have angiogenic property and have chemotactic property and have a growth promoting property. Okay, and we work the limit of exercising the tumor cells that cancer extracellular matrix seems to feed them in. We saw one hand attached to the Arabia high products of the degradation of the extracellular matrix. One of them is the basic fibroblastic growth factor. This is an angiogenic factor, resulted from the degradation of the extracellular matrix. The angiogenesis is induced by hypoxia when the tumor reads. The critical size, what is the critical size? One to two millimeter, okay? It undergoes, the tumor cells undergoes hypoxia. The tumor cells undergo hypoxia. Because the maximum distance of diffusion of the oxygen from the travelaries to the tissue is one to two millimeter. The hypoxia result into activation of a transcription factor called hypoxia induced factor one alpha. Normally, in the presence of oxygen, this transcription factor is destroyed by the one hidden window protein in the presence of the oxygen. Okay. Hypoxia prevent the destruction of the hypoxia induced factor one alpha by the one Hebel lindo protein. This is a photosensitive, oh sorry, oxygen sensitive transcription factor. شو معنى transcription factor؟ تذكر أنا هالسنة مررت ال يعني الإعادة كل مرة أسوي إعادة إلى ال gene structure or how uh, gene induces uh, protein synthesis. Show me the hormone in transcription factor. Transcription factor is factor present in the cytoplasm or in the nuclear. And uh, when it is activated by signals, it will translocate to the nucleus and bind to the specific gene. Each gene has its own specific transcription factor, okay? And binding of the transcription factor to the gene will activate the transcription of the gene. And transcription of the gene producing the messenger RNA when this starts the process of synthesis of the protein. Here, 
So the hypoxia in induced factor one alpha is a transcription factor. When it is activated by hypoxia, it translocates to the nucleus, bind to the gene. Which gene here? Vascular endothelial growth factor gene. Result into activation of the vascular endothelial growth factor gene and synthesis of the vascular endothelial growth factor protein. All right. Now let's back to our A activation of transcription factor will activate the transcription of the gene and transcription of the gene result into synthesis of the protein. The protein is now vascular endothelial growth factor. Simple, simple. Then the vascular endothelial growth factor will induce angiogenesis by binding to the receptors on the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and lymphatics. receptors, but the rule is that different vascular endothelial growth factors of the three types of the vascular endothelial growth factor receptors. Okay, binding of the vascular endothelial growth factor to the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor results into stimulation of the endothelial cell proliferation and angiogenesis starts. Okay, add the in which the tumor cells producing the angiogenic factors, some angiogenic factors coming from the Degradation of the extracellular matrix, some of them are coming from the inflammatory cells associated with the tumor. All of them bind with the vascular endothelial growth factor receptors on the endothelial cells of the adjacent blood vessel or lymphatic and stimulate the proliferation of the endothelial cells and development of the new blood vessels. This is called angiogenesis. The anti-angiogenic factors or angiogenesis inhibitors, the most important one is the thrombosbondin one. And the thrombosbondin one is produced by the tumor cells. This is controlled by the P53 gene. But the other will appear, P53, gene is a tumor suppressor or suppressor gene. It is normal gene. Its function is to control or to inhibit unnecessary cell proliferation. One functions multi is encoding and stimulate the synthesis of the thrombosbondin 1, which is angiogenesis inhibitor. Other angiogenesis inhibitors are angiostatin, endostatin, vasculostatins, have it resulted from the cleavage of uh, matrix components. Early in the tumor or in normal cell, the P53 gene is normal and it inhibits angiogenesis by producing thrombosbondin 1. All right? So, in normal cell or in early tumor, the P53 gene is still active, rather, for the and to stimulate imports for the synthesis of thrombosbondin 1. So the thrombosbondin 1 is high and the vascular endothelial growth factor is low. So there is no angiogenesis. And the tumor remains small in size and localized until the P53 becomes mutationally inactive. Mutation means a full change 
and the number and or sequence of the bases in the gene. Okay? And so the encoded protein will be abnormal. And it will be non-functioning. This is called the mutational inactivation. The protein will be inactive because of the mutation. So when the tumor at the beginning remains small, unlocalized, small in size, because the D53 is still active and producing the thrombospondine one. With the time, with the accumulation of the mutations, there will be mutational inactivation of P53 protein, gene of the protein. Good gene and the protein, other protein and the gene. So with the mutational inactivation of P53, there will be degree synthesis of the thrombosbondin 1, which is angiogenesis inhibitor, and an increased synthesis of the vasculoendothelial growth factor and angiogenesis start. So this is an early tumor. The thrombosbondin 1 is high or low? An early tumor, high, okay? Because P53 is normal. لحد الآن هو طبيعي. أخذنا صار عصاقة فيها بس بعد بيحاجي شغل. واضح؟ أكون شنو صقعة؟ شنو صقعة؟ يعني كفخة. بس أقول كفخة شيء. الطراق بس أقول الطراق فينه. Okay. And the vascular endothelial growth factor is high or low? <laughs> Normal, bad now, okay? Normal or early tumor. So the thrombospontin 1 is high, then P53 is normal and active producing, and the vascular endothelial factor is uh, low, so no angiogenesis. And the tumor remained long period, several years, months, until there will be inactivation of the P53 because of the accumulation of mutations. When the P53 is inactive, mutationally inactive because of the mutation, so the level of the thrombosbondine 1 will be low. Okay? And there will be high level of vascular endothelial growth factor and angiogenesis start. Once the angiogenesis starts, the tumor becomes larger in size, growing rapidly, becomes more aggressive, will be able to invade and to metastasize in test. All right? So this is the most important factor in determining the rate of the tumor growth and the potential aggressiveness of the tumor is the stimulation or starting the angiogenesis synthesis of new blood vessels responsible for the supplying of the tumor with the blood and the nutrients. We have a term called the growth fraction. المفروض هسه نعسته حسب الدراسات اللي اجريت على طلب الشطار والكساله ورا نص ساعه المفروض ينعس الواحد ويدوق ترى مو؟ لكن المتحدث يظل يحكي ولا يهمه طبعا ولا يهمه غير ما يحكي يحكي ولا يتعب ولا شيء لكن اللي يستمع ماكسيموم اتنشن او اليرتنس ويل بي ات بيننج اوف ذا ليكتشر يبدي ينزل الدروب إلى الصفر بعد نص ساعة، okay. فلازم المتحدث التيتشر يطلع القلبة من هالأجواء كلها مثل ما أنا هسا جاي أسوي، حتى أرفع درجة انتباهكم إلى الماكسيموم من جديد، وراها يبدي ينزل بربع ساعة، أوكي، okay. أول مرة نزل بنص ساعة، هسا الربع اللي فوق راح ينزل بربع ساعة، فالمفروض ألحق أنطيكم شغلاتي كلها بربع ساعة. ولذلك صارت المحاضرة 45 دقيقة ما صارت ساعة. لأنه ورا 45 دقيقة لا بعد لو 100 نكتة ما بتسكون بيها. 
growth of fraction is the proportion of the tumor cells that are proliferating, entering the cell cycle. The prune cell cycle. In the tumor, in early tumor, the vast majority of the tumor cells are within the cell cycle, are proliferating. Then most of them leave the cell cycle because of the lack of nutrition. More will be diet had that rohal the plot of proliferating, yalla, 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 more not angiogenesis mafu. Lack of the nutrition, half the cell cycle will collapse. The Karoha cell cycle, the G1, SKS, G2, and the MKS. Okay? From, for the cell to complete one cell cycle and divide into two daughter cells, division of the cell into two daughter cells, Manaha. It completes one cell cycle, okay? And any tumor, any cell in the body, in order to enter the cell cycle on the start division, it should be stimulated by growth factor. Normally, without the stimulation, no cell division. This is normal. And for, the, for any cell to complete the cell cycle, it should pass these checking points between face and face. So the rate of the tumor growth is determined by the growth fraction. The balance between the tumor cell proliferation and the tumor cell loss. Some human tumors, practice my own behavior, metal and small cell carcinoma, uh, acute leukemia, high grade lymphomas, usually have high growth of fraction. And so the clinical course of this tumor is rapid or slow. Rapid, okay, because they will grow more rapidly. They have high growth fraction. Vast majority of the tumor cells are proliferating. So it is characterized by a rapid clinical course, rapid enlargement and early aggressive behavior. While most of human cancers fall on the breast, the prostate, most of them have low growth fraction. And so the clinical course is slow. Okay? There is cell proliferation, but at the same time, there is cell loss. Angiogenesis mafu. Tikbar, tikata, tikbar, ukhapsa na kishe. Tikdet, and the blood vessel, one to two millimeter, kalas, ma tiku All right? The cell loss is more than or Cell production exceeds the cell loss by only 10%. And this is not enough for the tumor to increase in size. So when the growth fraction of the tumor is low, so you will expect slowly growing the tumor with a slow uh, clinical course. Start with the horse defense against tumors. For the immune system to attack the tumor cells, it should be it should recognize first the tumor cells. And for the tumor cells to be recognized by the immune system, 
leukemia cells should express antigens. I have two antigen antibody, microbiology with the vacuum. Antibodies, antigens, katoa, your reaction. Then, when the human, when the human or host immune system recognize the tumor cells, there should be an effector mechanism. And whether the human immunity is effective against the tumor cells or not. And if it is effective, if the tumors, if the immune cells can recognize and kill the tumor cells, so how can the tumor cells escape the immune system, protect themselves from the immune system? These the questions need to be answered during the next lecture, okay? Yes. قبل لانه المحاضرة بس ندخل مدخل بسيط على تيومر أنتيجينز والله ولا يفكنا هذا اليوم قد أكره <تصفيق> بعد هي لفل تتبعون من هاي الساعة ساعة غلط أوكي بس على فلت بعد The tumor cells, as any cell, express antigens. Some of the antigens are called the tumor-specific antigens, which are expressed by the tumor cells only, not by the normal cells. What's the name here? Tumor-specific antigens. Wires as well as by normal cells. And these are called tumor associated antigens. I saw a show and said, Man of Lot Behe, men is in a tumor specific antigens, Madaha, expressed by the tumor cells only. Normally, the normal peptides. It's suppressed on the cell, on the membrane of the antigen presenting cells in association with the class one major histocompatibility complex. Okay, HLA or major histocompatibility complex or human leukocyte antigen is not a complex. And this is recognized by tumor cells, but in no normal cells, expressing normal peptides, normal antigens, normal protein on their surface, do not be recognized, are not recognized by the immune cells because of the, what? Self-tolerance. Self-tolerance. Okay, any cell that recognizes the cell peptide antigen from the immune system, recognize any normal peptide, cell peptide. But in the tumor cells, because of the genes are mutated, so proteins will be normal or abnormal. Abnormal. The structure of the protein will be abnormal and it will be recognized by the immune cells as non self, as foreign protein. Okay, well, my time in the structure is because of mutation, it is altered the protein. So, this is when it's suppressed. On the surface of the tumor cell, in association with the class one major histocompatibility complex, it will be recognized by the cytotoxic T lymphocyte. The CD8 positive. So these are the 
anti-TNA or tumor specific antigens. They are altered protein because they are encoded by a mutated gene. And so they are expressed as non cell as foreign peptides. And the new reaction occurs. You had the